Hello, this is Joe McGee. Welcome to our podcast. Make sure that you subscribe and please share the podcast with your friends. That is the number one way you can help us reach people with God's love and healing. We love you guys. Hope you enjoy the podcast. Hey, everybody. It's Joe McGee through the Bible where we're going from Genesis to Revelation in chronological order as it happened. I've said this several times in this program. The Bible is not written in chronological order. It's written from the longest book to the shortest book. Uh, Genesis covers some 2,500 years of history, and so that's why it's the first book. It's not the oldest book. I personally am, uh, believe that I believe that, uh, uh, you know, uh, you got others that are older than that, but they're not, they're not put in that order. So, uh, uh, Job is personally, my thing is the oldest book in the Bible, which is incredible because of the story of what happens with Job. So today we're picking up in uh, Joshua chapter 12. This continues the story how God sent them out. They've been delivered from Egypt. They crossed the Red Sea. They've settled the promised land where they're settling it now. And God's giving them detailed instruction every day what to do, where to go, who their enemies are going to be, and how to conquer them. And so God doesn't leave anybody alone. Shows them what exactly they need to do. So Joshua chapter 12, east of the Jordan. These were the kings east of the Jordan River who had been killed by the Israelites and whose land was taken. Their territory extended from the Arnon Gorge to Mount Hermon. Now, Mount Hermon, you know, that's northern Israel, Mount Hermon, including all the land east of the Jordan Valley. King of the Amor- uh, Amorites who lived in Hezron was defeated. His kingdom included Aor in the edge of Ammon, uh, the Ammon Gorge, and extended from the middle of the Ammon Gorge, the Jabbok River, and which serves to border for the Ammonites. So the Ammonites are there. All these nations, you'll, you'll realize if you read Bible stories, they're all mentioned at some point in time. But the Bible's not written in chronological order, so sometimes it gets confusing. No, it's very orderly. It's very detailed, very orderly. God orders our steps, directs our paths, God's into all truth. So they're being led by God. This territory included the southern half of the territory of Gilead. Uh, Shahan also controlled the Jordan Valley and the regions to the east, as far from the north to the Sea of Galilee, and as far south to the Dead Sea, including the road um, southward to the slopes of Pisgah. King Og, O.G., King Og, Abashan, uh, the last of the Rephites, lived in Asheroth of Eden. And he ruled a territory stretching from Mount Hermon to Selaka to the north of all of Bashan, in the east and the western to the borders of the kingdoms of Geshur and Maccabee. This territory included the northern half of Gilead as far as the boundaries of King uh, Shion and Eshbon. Now, people think, well, who cares? Well, it's important. You know, there's nothing in the Bible God didn't want there. And so when you become a student of the Bible, you're fascinated because God is so detailed. I'm going to tell you exactly what we're going to do, where we're going to go, what we accomplished. Um, let's see, uh, verse 9. Moses, the servant of the Lord, the Israelites, had destroyed the people of King Shion the king, and King Og, and Moses gave their land as possession of the tribes of Reuben, Gad, and the half-tribe of Manasseh. Verse 7. The following is the list of the kings that Joshua and the Israelite armies defeated on the west side of the Jordan from Balagad, to the valley of uh, Mount Halak, which leads up to Seir. Joshua gave this land to the tribes of Israel, their possessions, including the hill country, the, t- the western foot hills, the Jordan Valley, the mountain slopes, Judean wilderness, and the Negev Desert. The people who lived in this region were called Hittites, the Amorites, the Canaanites, the Pezites, the Hivites, and the Jebusites, and these are the kings that Israel defeated. And he gives a long list, the king of Jericho, king of Ai, the king of Jerusalem, the king of Hebron, the king of Lechash, the king of Eglon, the king of Gezer, king of Deber, king of Gader, the king of Hamar, king of Arab, the king of Lebanon, king of Adullam, king of Mecca, king Bethel, king of Tapir, king Heper, king of king Lashan, king of Madon, king Hazor, king of Shimron, Meron, king of Akab, king Kanak, king of Megiddo, and the king of Kedish, uh, king of Carmel, down to the last and the king of Gilgal and the king of Tizra. In all, 31 kings were defeated. Now, do you understand how God did that? He is so detailed. When you become a student of the Bible, you are fascinated. God leaves nothing out. 
He's going to tell you what he's going to do, what he did, and how he did it, and why he did it. And so there's a reason for everything. Sometimes you reason, say, man, God, he was just vicious. No, he wasn't. He's very loving and kind, gracious. Uh, the mercy, he's a merciful God. God's mercy is new every morning. But people who sinned against him were rebellious. Uh, we don't say these words very much, but they were demon-possessed. You know, Jesus spent a lot of time here on earth, uh, 33 and a half years. His three and a half years of ministry, he went about teaching and preaching. So Jesus, the Son of God, came to earth, spent a third of his time teaching and preaching. A third of the scriptures of Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John talk about him teaching and preaching. He spent a third of his time healing people, people that were sick, crippled, dying, diseased. Spent a third of his time healing, and then Jesus spent a third of his time casting out devils. What? Yeah, man, a lot of demon possession going on. So nothing's changed. <laughs> that might be 2,000 years ago. There's still a people that need to be dealt with in different ways. And so you got to understand the ministry of Jesus. You still need to teach and preach. People are lost. They don't know. They need to hear the truth. And every weekend we minister, people get saved. Wow, they didn't know. They didn't know they need to get saved. And, and that God loves them and God's for them and, and the, all the bad stuff they've been going through wasn't God trying to teach them something. God doesn't use evil to teach anybody anything. It's the goodness of God that leads men to repentance. And so just about third of his time healing. He didn't want anybody sick, dying, and suffering. Well, God's trying to teach something. That's not my God. He's not trying to use God never used sickness to teach anybody anything. God's trying to heal people, get them to live long with long life while I satisfy you and show you my salvation. And then Jesus spent a third of his time casting out devils. God gave us authority. Jesus told his disciples, you'll go around, you'll cast out demons. You've got authority over devils. And they came back one time. They'd been out ministering, came back on one of the worst times Jesus sent them out. And they were so excited. said, Jesus, even demons are subject to your name. He said, well, don't get excited about that. Get excited that the gospel is being preached, that people are getting born again, and they're going to live forever in heaven. Get excited about that. So. That's just a great story about all the kings and what happened and how God is so detailed. Well, if God's that detailed in Israel's life, he's that detailed in your life. There's nothing in your life God's not concerned about. Whenever you go to God in prayer, he already knows what you're going through. I tell people, God knew your mother before she met your father. God knew your parents before your parents even met. God knew you were coming. You didn't shock anybody when you came out of your mother's womb. You might have surprised your parents, but you didn't surprise God. He saw you coming. All the days of your life are written in a book in heaven. God will order steps, direct paths, guide it all true, show things to come, talk to you when you go to sleep, talk to you when you get up. God's a good God. It's going to be a great run. So I hope you enjoyed that. Tune in next time. We're going to pick up and go through Joshua and the children of Israel going to the promised land. God bless, guys. Thanks for listening. Be sure to join us Monday, Wednesday, and Friday to hear more of what God can do in your life. He's got a great future for you and your family. And we're here to help you get there. Please make sure you visit Joe McGee Ministries on Facebook, YouTube, and Instagram. There you find all of our Friday funny videos and other encouraging resources for you and your family. While you're at it, be sure to visit JoeMcGee.com. We have all sorts of materials, books, DVDs, you name it, all there to help you, your marriage, and your family succeed.